Russian flight controllers uh, holding off on giving uh, Valery Tokarev the green light uh, to deploy the Orlon spacesuit until we have a uh, better video view now that we've reacquired a downlink TV capability through the tracking and data relay satellite system. It's just behind us, KPU. Ah, 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 понятно. I understand. Ah, somebody, the release the the tether from the BU, uh, the radio scaff. Okay, I understand. We unsecure it uh, from the suit, and then we attach the uh, the tether remains on the bow. That's correct. You leave the tether. I understand. Valery? Uh, you have to try and uh, push it at, at least half a meter per second uh, against the um, motion. Valery, you can release uh, the uh, tether and you can secure the tether on the station. We're getting the picture. All right. Goodbye. Mr. Smith. Yeah, we can see him. And there was the uh, deployment of Suitset. Flying away. Uh, we can At 5.02 p.m. Central Time, Suitset on its way, heading into an innovative and solitary orbit around the Earth. Yeah, it's uh, moving at the specified acceleration. We can see uh, this satellite from the ground. Wonderful picture, Valeri. Thank you very much. Suitsat having been deployed over the uh, South Central Pacific Ocean at 5.02 p.m. Central Time. Valeri? Bill? Go ahead. A scene reminiscent of science fiction movies that have depicted stranded astronauts floating away from their spacecraft. Suitsat begins its journey filled with ham radio equipment to transmit messages and slow scan digital TV pictures to ham enthusiasts and students around the world. The uh, trajectory operations officer here in Mission Control reports a good deploy within the cone uh, for safety to ensure no recontact with the International Space Station. I've attached it to my own tether, to my own box. All right. Valery, you recall that you start with the uh, gap spanner that goes from the EVA hatch to the PEGEO. Yeah, we need to go up first. That's right, you have to go up. Well, take a look at that. It's not... Uh, you just take to look at that, it's uh, stuck. The suit sat, uh, the used Orlon spacesuit filled with ham radio gear, uh, continuing uh, to float away. Yeah, it's okay. About uh, one orbit or 90 minutes from now, it should be about eight kilometers away from the International Space Station, maintaining an opening rate of about six to eight kilometers per orbit. From a device here. Again, uh, 
the transmissions of uh, greetings in a variety of languages from students in Japan, Europe, Canada, and the United States uh, should begin uh, to reach ham enthusiasts around the globe uh, for the next uh, several days until the batteries on the suit expire. The suit itself, uh, its orbit will begin to decay in a few weeks and it will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. Then the circular to the docking compartment, then the, a radial handrail on the docking compartment to go to the Pechao. Yeah, I'm already on the uh, gap spanner. Copy. All right, uh, moving along to the Pechao. An eerie view of uh, a discarded Orlon spacesuit as it uh, continues uh, to float away from the International Space Station filled with amateur radio equipment that uh, will provide ham enthusiasts an ability uh, to hear from an orbiting satellite for the next several days. The International Space Station and this discarded Orlon spacesuit currently orbiting 220 miles above the Earth over the South Pacific. There is uh, a target on the Pahao, so uh, be careful there. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, here is the Strela, the antenna, so we need to go up uh, using the circular tether. Валерий, no. go ahead. When the where the strela boom is attached to the handrail, you use that handrail to go to the pechao. Um, the gap spanner, the one the one that's uh, next to the strela grapple fixture. Well, you can use the strela. Here it is, Valeri, this one. Can you see any numbers? Could you tell us? Yeah, the, from the EVA letter, we could have come here. With the expired Orlon suit called SuitSat continuing uh, to move away from the International Space Station as the station and uh, the discarded suit move over the South Pacific at an altitude of 220 miles approaching the southwest coast of the continent of South America, MacArthur and Tokarev uh, are continuing uh, now to move uh, from the Piers Docton compartment with their first task of the spacewalk having been completed uh, over to the Zarya module uh, to begin work to uh, to detach and relocate a, an adapter, a grapple fixture adapter from uh, the Strela boom that is a cargo crane that is located uh, Another gap spanner on the Piers Docton compartment, this uh, cargo crane adapter uh, will be relocated from its current position on the Zarya module of the International Space Station over to pressurized mating adapter number three on the side of the Unity connecting node, the module that connects uh, the U.S. and Russian segments of the station that will free up the space on Zarya for the delivery of uh, service module debris panels basically a coat of armor that will be installed on the hull of the service module uh, on a future expedition spacewalk uh, to provide additional protection for the service module through its lifetime. Uh, 